Hey, friendship family, let me invite you to grab your copy of God's Word and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to read together verse 2. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 2. Now, you remember that the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, and he says a couple of things about these believers. He says they are saints, that is, they're holy ones. They've been separated out, transformed, made different from the world. And the reason that there has been this transformation and that they've been made holy is because they are faithful in Christ Jesus. That is, they have put their faith in him. They are believers in him, and they have a new identity as the people of God. And in verse 2 of chapter 1, Paul is going to offer to the church at Ephesus, to the saints who are faithful in Christ Jesus, a word of welcome and a word of salutation. And we're going to read this together, and I want us to think about it this morning because it would be easy for us to overlook this, and I think you'll see why. Look at verse 2. Paul says this, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, easy, I think, for us to overlook this verse. And the reason is because we might think, well, this is just a normal way of greeting someone in a first century letter. And to some degree, that's true. Uh, the word grace is a twist on the normal Greek greeting. Normally in a Greek letter from this time period, they would have used the word uh, kari, which is rejoice. And, and this word grace is a twist on that word. It's the word charis. And so uh, here's a normal, uh, relatively normal Greek greeting. And then there's the word peace, which in Greek is irene, but in Hebrew is shalom. And that was the normal Jewish way of greeting people. And maybe we would think, well, Paul is a Greek Jew who's become a believer in the Lord Jesus. And so wouldn't it be ordinary for him to greet people in this way, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, of course, there's to some degree a normalcy and a custom here expressed, but I think there's more than that. You see, what I see Paul doing here is showing us what is his normal way of being, his normal way of interaction. And I see that because I look at the other letters that the Apostle Paul wrote, whether to New Testament churches or individual believers in the Lord Jesus, and I see that over and again, Paul greets God's people with grace and with peace. We see that in his letter to the Romans, in his letter to the church at Corinth, and, and to the Philippians, and to the Thessalonians, and, and to the church at Colossae. Over and again, we see the Apostle Paul offering grace and peace. We see it in his letters to individuals like Timothy and Titus and Philemon. All the time, Paul is offering grace and peace. And it's that fact that he's always offering grace and peace that causes me to pause on this verse. And to think about the fact that when God's people interacted with the Apostle Paul, when, when they heard from him in written form, or perhaps even when they were given a visit by him, because this is his way of being in the world, they would have expected him to offer them grace and peace. And what I want to ask us today is, what do people expect of us? What do the people we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis expect from us? Not just in a word of welcome, not just in a salutation, but I mean in the way that we interact with them, in the way that we bring the overflow of our life in Christ to bear on our day-to-day -day lives. When people see us coming, what do they expect? And when people see us coming, do they think, this is going to be so good for me. This is going to bless my soul. This is going to encourage me. This will edify me. This will build me up. This is going to bring me comfort. This is going to show me uh, some instruction for my life. When I interact with this person, I will be better. Or when people see us coming, do they think, this is not going to be good. This person is bitter. This person is a discouragement. This person is, is always downhearted. This person is always depressed. This person is going to tear me down. They're not going to be blessing my life. They're going to be perhaps even cursing my life. And brothers and sisters, as followers of Jesus Christ, 
we ought to desire that our normal way of being in the world blesses those around us, that it brings the peace and the grace of God to bear upon their lives. We want to build others up because we have experienced God's magnificent grace and peace. And so I want to challenge you today. If you think about your life and you know, you know, I'm, I'm often salty, I, I'm often discouraging, I'm often focused on the negative, I, I often criticize, I'm not normally building people up. Brothers and sisters, why don't you join me in stopping and confessing that to God and saying, Lord, would you help me to make it the custom of my life that when I interact with people, I bring your grace and your peace to bear upon them. Let's pray together. Father, we who are followers of Jesus Christ have experienced your grace, your unmerited favor and blessing, and we have experienced your peace, the wholeness, the completeness, the calm, and the rest that you give us in Christ. But Father, sometimes we fail to bring that grace and that peace to bear on our day-to-day -day living. So it's my prayer for these, my brothers and sisters, and for myself, that you would help us today to examine ourselves. And if we realize by the work of your Spirit in us that we often fail to bring your grace and your peace to bear on our interactions with others, then Lord, let us repent today and help us to be a people who are marked by, who are typified by grace and peace, the kind that come from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray it in his name and for his sake. Amen.